Welcome to Field Sports Britain and Happy New Year! Coming up! The nights are long and dark, but we're lighting them up with night vision. Roy Lupton is out doing the kinds of things that Roy Lupton does at this time of year. He's knocking down foxes first. Andy Crow has forgotten his pigeons. He can't recall his corvids. He's had an invitation. He's going pheasant shooting. Some of you, especially if you are a pigeon, will have only seen Andy from the neck up. But today he is stepping out from the hide for some exceptionally high-flying pheasant shooting. He's a guest here today as a thank you for helping out with the cover crops, which, as many of those watching in the UK will appreciate, have been difficult to manage with the appalling wet weather we've had. Crow and his son also beat here regularly, so he knows the guns and how well the birds fly. You see some nice birds here. Well, to the top of them trees is hard, and we're at, well three quarters away out the bank, and a pheasant over the top of them trees is going to be hard and most normal shoot. So it is, it is good birds here, serious birds. On the first drive, shoot manager Mike tells Andy where he wants yeah, him. Yeah, they start coming through here, and Nigel starts missing yeah. him. All right. Crack some nice birds. Okay. On most yeah, occasions, well he'll be a back gun. Andy's cousin Gary is also here today, not to shoot nor to load, but just to enjoy the scenery, the weather, and the company. Could pheasant shooting become a major spectator sport? Today, that depends on how well Andy shoots. The first drive doesn't deliver much for Mr. Crow, but the birds flying across this Surrey Valley are wonderful to watch. When Andy does get into the shooting, he'll be trying out some speciality pheasant cartridges from British ammunition manufacturer Hull Cartridges. I'm shooting some quite high birds today. I've been sent some uh, high pheasant extreme. I've asked for them in size 5 shot. Uh, we're only using fibre wad here, 32 gram. Because um, they are serious birds here. Everyone that knows me knows what cartridge I use. These are totally different to what I'm used to using. Um, and I'm going to see how they go. I'll give them a good try today. Drive two is a favourite of Andy's, and if it goes well, there should be some screamers. Tell me about the gun, Andy. Gary's brought this up. Brought this up for me the year, so. He's had it since he was 17. He bought it from Chris Potter Guns. It's only a Maruku. It's, well, only a Maruku. It's a lovely gun. I shoot it well. I shoot it better than him, that's why he lets me use it, so. Um, it's just that. Me using my auto here wouldn't really go down really well, I don't think. He certainly got his eye in for this one and makes some cracking shots. Getting a getting a feel of these cartridges now. Um, yeah, I'm getting on. Well, I had some nice shots there. Had a couple of silly misses, but it'd be boring if you got everything to shoot at, wouldn't it? Time for a snifter, for medicinal purposes only. In case you are wondering, <laughs> this man is not a midget, but a normal-sized bloke with an enormous hip flask. The first two drives were just a warm-up for this one. If it were a ride at a fairground, it would be known as the beast or the big one. The birds can be as much as 150 yards above you, well out of range for most shooters. So it has got Andy's blood pumping. Yeah, I've seen them fly off this drive before. Um, they are some of the best, best birds I've ever seen. Um, you've got to know your stuff to get these. And well, we'll see how they come over today, but. I was up there beating a few weeks back and they take off from the top of the bank and we've got a wood behind us and they're making for where the pen is at the top of the wood and I've seen them come over here, they come over here, some of them 100, 150 yards up and uh, they are, well they're not, well they are unshootable really, um, unless you're Jules Digweed and it's a bit different, he's in a different league so people like him can shoot them up there 100 yards but I can't, I don't claim to either. So. But let's just see how it goes. There are a few partridge in here too, but it's the pheasants that are supplying the sport. And here comes Andy's bird of the day. He later confesses that it's one of the birds of his life. 
Unfortunately, cameraman David's New Year yoga classes have come a bit late to bend with the shot, but he gets on it for the re-entry and the splashdown. I, I won't get better than that. That's, well, that's what you come out here for, to shoot them big ones. And to shoot something like that, it's my god day, that is, I'll tell you. Very impressed, yeah. yeah. I'd like to let it go. I don't think I'd have hit it, though. Cool. It was high. After a shot like that, you do just want to put your gun away and go home so as not to spoil the moment. But then again, with birds like this, it's worth sticking around. Yeah, I'm not a big man on the pheasants anyway. You've only got to have one shot like that and you can take that home and remember it for a while. Because I'll tell you, oh, that was some shot. Uh, yeah, no, it's like I say, it's not big bag with pheasants anyway. It's just picking the birds you want to shoot. And that was one that I wanted to shoot. When I come here, I was a bit worried. I didn't think I was going to hit anything on here because they do come off here seriously high. So, uh, but no, no, I'm having a good day. I didn't start off too good, but. These cartridges are performing well, so I shot that one nicely, so yeah. On the last drive before lunch, Andy stands behind the guns which are lined up along the bottom of the valley. Andy gets a few chances on birds that have already ducked and weaved past a number of shots. Thankfully, this one is not his. It's a foot away from an insurance claim. <laughs> it's been another great drive, and there is plenty of praise for those who have shot well. How did you get on? I got two. Did you? Two there, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice old cock bird. The did you shoot the hen bird? Yeah. The one that nearly hit the car? Uh, no, cock bird, yeah. <laughs> Was it close? <laughs> Second <laughs> barrel. That's far away. That two foot away. I heard everyone shout. Yeah. yeah. Good shot, though. Thanks, cheers. Lunchtime and a chance to talk over this morning's shooting. This group of guns have shot well today, they've had to. It wouldn't be much fun for a novice here. With the days being so short at this time of year, everyone decides to save dessert for later. The last drive is another stormer. The valley is perfect for the experienced gun. Andy used to be farm manager on this ground and grew up around here. He's known some of the guys here since he was a boy. So, before the ground rings out with shots, let's find out whether the crow prefers a day on the pigeons or the pheasants. A good day has been shooting. It takes a lot of beating. Had a lot of beating. A lot of it's been a brilliant day. Outstanding day. When the birds come, it's fast and furious. Andy picks the bird he wants way in front and stays on it. It's a technique that's working well for him. Pace to pick out a bird and concentrate on it. Don't change your mind, stay on it. Um, that's what I always do. Because you made up your mind on that bird, so just stick with it, that's what I always do. Cousin Gary has generously been offered a shot on this last drive, and Andy keeps him on his toes. We have been so lucky today. The weather has been with us, which is a miracle, and we've been able to witness some great shooting by Andy and the rest of the guns on ground that keeps everyone searching the heavens for their next opportunity. Now, from tall birds to tall stories, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. Boxing Day hunts across the UK attracted strong support this year, despite the recent flooding and poor hunting conditions. Foxhound packs and other hound sports are enjoying strong support, thanks many believe to Tony Blair's attempt to ban them. Staying with hunting and MPs are investigating the third of a million pound bill run up by the RSPCA in its efforts to obtain a conviction from a British fox hunt. The Heathrop Hunt has pleaded guilty to four counts of unlawfully hunting a wild fox with dogs. It's not justice, but it's law. The RSPCA is too rich for most people to face in court. The presiding magistrate called the RSPCA's £327,000 in costs staggering. We made a film about the ruling. Click on the link on the screen to watch it. 
UK shooting associations are hitting back at the Scottish Government, which wants to ban air guns. Holyrood has launched a public consultation on plans to introduce a licensing system for Scotland's half a million air guns. The proposals include a ban on people plinking in their back gardens. You can take action. Both the Basque and Countryside Alliance websites have instructions on what to do. A new British shooting YouTube channel is being launched next week. Schools Challenge TV. After years of inspiring youngsters to take up shooting, the Oxford Gun Company is continuing its drive to attract people to the sport with a new regular show going live next Tuesday, the 8th of January. And from then on, each episode will be published on YouTube the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. And finally, it's been outed as a fake. Homegrown animations are becoming more and more popular on YouTube. This film of an eagle apparently snatching a child in Canada is one of them. It's also meant lots of people watching our own series of Golden Eagle films, which are real and don't include children being plucked from playgrounds. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Well, now a typical winter's day out with the legend that is Lupton. When I get the camera settings wrong, cameraman David often reminds me that even a worm learns, Charlie. Clearly, rats are much further up the evolutionary ladder. They have learned that when the security lights are on at Roy's house, it can mean a sorry end. These two were clearly not destined for greatness in Camp Rat. The others must now eat the birdseed under cover of darkness, which means a change of tactics. Welcome to my bathroom. No, a little bit of an odd setup, but um, I've just been provided with a, uh, a new night sight that we're going to be using to uh, go and do some foxing with. But I really wanted to get used to it and see how it worked and uh, make sure that we could get everything set up properly. So what we thought we'd do is put it on an air rifle and um, see if we can shoot a few rats first with it. Make sure that uh, we've got uh, everything as it should be. We've got a tack light illuminator, um, IR illuminator on there and we've got the night vision unit on the back of it, on the back of the scope here. Again, on the Webley air rifle this time, and we're just experimenting with it. What I'm gonna do before we start ratting is just take a few shots at a target and hope that we're somewhere on. We might just have to uh, just do a few fine adjustments. I'm not sure if it affects it, if it affects the zero, so uh, I shouldn't have thought it would do, but we'll have a, uh, a few shots just at the range. We're only gonna be shooting 15, 20 yards. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a few rats in the bank tonight with the night vision. Roy's artistic talents are tested yet again. Maybe he should design his own range of novelty targets, but with what seem to be comedy bosoms. Just say nobody's under the impression that I was drawing boobies on a rat. So it is now clearly a rat with paws, and now it's a holy rat. That rifle is still shooting true even with all the gear on. Today we've had to use our initiative to try and get a video signal from the new night vision kit, which Roy's clever friend has made him. It's incredible how cheap some of the most vital component parts on this setup are. If you have the know-how, why pay hundreds? It is based on a CCTV unit you can pick up on eBay for under a tenner. The, uh, the budget from Phil's Porch Channel strikes again, and what we've done is we've stolen a kiddies DVD player, so. Uh, and rather than watching Snow White, um, it's going to be playing uh, Shooty or Flatty Rats. We haven't got any way of recording directly to the camera at the moment. Um, we're transmitting from this to a, a receiver and we're going to play it on the, the CD player and then obviously film it from the CD player for tonight because we haven't got a, a, a dedicated uh, recorder for the unit, which we'll hopefully get next week. The image is not great at close range, getting better at ranges of 30 to 40 metres, not the 15 to 20 we've been working with. Roy does get three rats within five minutes. He hit this small one just in front of Roy's Christmas present to his parents. See, he does actually love his mother and father. Roy finds the other two rats close to the food tray. After he deals with them, confident that the kit works, he is happy enough to swap the IR illuminator and the box of tricks onto his 243, put a round or two down it and look up an old friend. I've got a, a Lampshire fox um, in one of the fields not too far away 
that's been causing me uh, grief for the last few weeks. So we'll have a quick pop over there and uh, see if we can account for that. En route, we spot some rabbits and Roy just has a look to see what is the best magnification to work with. Then we go looking for Charlie. A scan shows him up and Roy starts calling. He is sure there are two in the field, probably a mating pair. Roy keeps calling, trying to bring them as close as possible. Eventually, he drops the fox in front. Forgetting that fox coming in like that, that was absolutely superb. And to actually watch it coming in, no light, no lamps. Um, and he came off from a fair distance as well, that was absolutely superb. Very, very impressed with that. I definitely think I'm a convert to the dark arts. Back at base, we have a look at our Charlie. The only pity about taking the shot that I did there, obviously I shot the fox, preferably I would have liked to have taken the vixen, but uh, when you're looking at them like that, you just can't tell. So uh, I'm gonna, obviously we'll head back out another night and see if we can pick up that vixen, but uh, she looked like a very, very dark fox in the, uh, the imagery that we were getting there. So uh, she shouldn't be too hard to mistake. Night vision is an excellent tool and it's vital for those tricky customers. But with everything there is a downside. One thing Roy is aware of, just from this short outing, is losing out on the teamwork and the sociable side of foxing or lamping. And there's a lot to be said for that. And on that note, if you have made your own night vision kit, let us know so we can tell the world. Now, from small brown rodents to the wider world of hunting, on YouTube, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's kick off with rabbits. Rabbit Hunt Big Running Bunnies, brought to you by Buckeye Bunny Hunter, is a hilariously pointless film where two hours worth of two couple of fat beagles running riot after what appears to be the same rabbit is reduced to six minutes, mainly showing two men standing around in the rain, one carrying a horn and a pistol listening to hound music. It's not easy being an American rabbit. Sky views beagles and Heartland's Kennels Rabbit Hunt shows much the same. A bunch of good old boys from West Virginia unsuccessfully out after bunnies with hounds, only this footage is six long minutes unedited. It's a relief to get back to the UK, where viewer Sam Badham of YouTube channel SRS Power sends us his latest film, Carry and Crow, shot with the Browning B525. He is out pigeon shooting and manages to bring down a crow. That's one more kill than the first two films combined. Dislikers of live baiting, look away now. Dizzy Fish UK is back in his kayak for a river weir pool session. Live baiting for Pike. He catches 14. Here are the tactics and tackle he uses. Viewer Neil Hawkins sends us this fishing film with the warning, bit of swearing but you will understand why part way through. The one that got away, shark bait, has had nearly 12 million views and this is the reason. A shock for any angler. To Northern Ireland for the latest from the much-loved Hunter's Vermin. Air Rifle Hunting Night Sight NS200 Rat Hunt 2 2012 shows the man wielding his BSA Super 10 Mark II and, still sore from missing a rat in his last film, not missing any this time. Now we go to the USA for one of the big TV shows. Desert Sheep Hunt has our old friend Jason Bruce of Headhunter Chronicles heading down to Mexico for a Grand Slam Bighorn Ram in thick brush. Good shot. Meanwhile, Growing Deer TV offers as hunting white tails and turkey the redneck way. It's out with the guys from Redneck Blinds as they bow hunt turkeys, then take the muzzle loader for a late season doe hunt with an unexpected double, a doe and a bobcat. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week, and if you are watching this on YouTube, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button that's somewhere around the outside of the screen, or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter, or scroll down to the bottom of the page and pop your email address into our constant contact box, and we will constantly contact you about our programme, which is out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. Or go to our show page, www.youtube.com slash show slash fieldsportsbritain, where you can click to subscribe to just this show and not all of our films. This has been Field Sports Britain.